Hey guys, I'm attorney Darren Miller and this is D-Law. I'ma keep it real with you. The first thing I wanna do is welcome all the new subscribers and thank you guys for liking and sharing and asking really good questions for us to move forward with. Okay, so next on the agenda, we're gonna talk about current events. There's a lot of things that are going on here in the United States and throughout the world, and we were picking out a few of the select ones that we want to talk about, analyze, and give you some legal analysis from our point of view. The suspect is identified as a male, 17 years of age. He resides in Brooklyn. He has been charged with murder too, and that is being charged as a hate crime, and criminal possession of a weapon. He has been remanded. Mr. Seibley was traveling back home from New Jersey with four other male friends when they stopped for gas at this mobile gas station. As they waited to refuel their vehicle, Mr. Seibley and his group began dancing to music that was being played in their car. At this point, a male called out to Mr. Seibley and his group, demanding that they stop dancing. Others joined this male. As the group began to yell at Mr. Seibley and his friends, they began to call him derogatory names and use homophobic slurs against him. They also made anti-black statements, all while, dem uh, by, while demanding that they simply stop dancing. This perpetrator retreats away from Mr. Seibley while striking him one time with a soft, sharp object, piercing his chest and damaging his heart. T plus community, as well as all others. This is a city where you are free to express yourself. And that expression should never end with any form of violence. This is a very sad state of events. The fact that we recognize someone at a gas station is listening to loud music, dancing, having fun. And we can't just leave that person alone. Even though we don't like their lyrics, we don't like what they're saying, we don't like what they're thinking. We can't just leave them alone. And that's what our society is based on freedom, expression, being able to do what you want as long as it doesn't infringe on somebody else. And even when it does infringe on somebody else, are our acts reasonable in dealing with that action? If someone plays music that you don't like, do you have the right to tell them to shut it down? Yes. Do you have a right to maybe say, hey, be quiet? Yes. Do you have a right to call the police and maybe have them arrested? Yes. Do you have a right to take their life because they're gay? Obviously the answer is no, but that's exactly what happened here. We have this as a society in the United States have to encourage people, hey, it's the land of the free, home of the brave. But if, so, if we don't like certain things that other people are doing, we have to respect them, respect them enough to leave them to the side, to move on, to have enough self-control to where whatever they're doing, as long as it doesn't physically or mentally impact, and impact upon us, let it go. It is not okay to hurt someone, injure someone, commit a hate crime because we don't like someone's color, their ethnicity, their sexual status. We can't do those things. So these guys should be so these guys are going to be prosecuted. I think that the penalty should be extremely severe because we need to send a message that reactions like this are not going to be tolerated in our society. We have reported on at least four road rage deaths on our interstates. That's on top of a number of other reports of people who were shot but survived. In almost every case, investigators said it started with someone speeding or following too close. But now the problem is reaching into our quiet suburbs, neighborhoods where families expect to be safe. Jasmine Arena spent the day in Greeley speaking with a woman whose fiance was shot when someone rear ended him. The road rage incident happened here on 51st Avenue and 11th Street, and the family is now just trying to figure out what's next after their sole provider may never walk again. Whether on a busy road or a quiet street, emotions can run high. And you never expect it to happen to you. It became Jennifer Tucker and her fiance, Justin Young's reality a few weeks ago after a car rear ended them near their home in Greeley. Just basically someone driving recklessly 
and thinking that my fiance wanted to race him when we were just trying to get home. Jennifer and their 10th month old baby were in the car when her fiance confronted the driver that hit them. The driver grabbed the gun and pointed it at his face. Justin was able to wrestle with him a little bit, get him to drop it. He turned to try to run away. And that's when the other driver picked the gun back up and pulled the trigger. In a matter of seconds, this family's fate would change. Her fiance is now paralyzed and she says he'll never be able to walk again. He was a sole provider for our family. So now it's me figuring out what's going to be the most beneficial income source for us. But this is just one story. This is really scary to me. I I'm thinking, at least in my mind, OK, road rage is 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 a becoming a more frequent issue but did we hear those numbers did we hear those numbers in this community in colorado this community in colorado thirty thousand road rage incidents in two years in this one community so those numbers are unbelievable that leads if you extrapolate throughout the country millions of those types of opportunities for people's lives to be changed forever so guys, I say this and I say it all the time. Be very careful how you act behind that wheel because you don't know what that other person is thinking. You don't know what's going through their mind. You don't know what's going on in their world. When someone hits your car, yes, you're going to be upset. Yes, you're going to be pissed off, but maintain control. Rem remember that most likely it was an accident. If it was an accident, you get out, you exchange information, but keep it under control. All this kind of, hey, fuck you, kiss my ass, I'm going to kill you. You don't know what that other person's going to do. And look what happened in this situation. This young family of four, four young children and these young folks, their lives are now changed forever. This gentleman who was shot will never walk again. These things are going to follow them for the rest of their life because of things that should never have gotten so far out of control. While most of that, without any doubt, was not in his control. And I'm not blaming this gentleman for what happened. I'm just reminding our folks to be careful out there. Be cautious and always try and protect yourself because no one's life deserves to be changed in this manner that this family is now going to have to go through. Chaos broke out in New York City's Union Square on Friday after Twitch streamer Kai Sinet held a giveaway event. Sinet, who has over 15 million followers across social media platforms, said during a Wednesday Twitch stream that he would be hosting a huge giveaway Friday at 4 p.m. in Union Square. What goes on from here on out, bro, you feel what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody for themselves. This is a war out there, man. Crowds gathered and became unruly, blocking traffic, throwing debris, and clinging to moving cars. Oh my God. I mean, this just shows you the influence of social media and how when you don't do it in a reasonable fashion, things can get out of control and can get out of control fast. It's a miracle that no one got killed here. Look at all the objects being thrown around left and right at people's heads. I'm surprised there was no gunplay when people start to push and shove and tussle in a situation like this. And I'm glad that the police got control of it as, as quickly as they did. The likelihood of him getting prosecuted for anything extremely significant is not that great. I don't know that I agree with that because a lesson needs to be taught to people that if you're going to put on events like this, you need to do it responsibly. And clearly he did not in this circumstance. And look at the results of this. We all want attention. We all want that camera on us. We all want views on social media, but some views aren't good views. And this is a terrible look that we don't need to see repeated. This reminds me of our Travis Scott Astro World litigation. These guys did not think their way through the situation. And as a result, a lot of my clients and others out there got injured, got killed, got hurt because people did not think their way through the process. If you're going to put on events, 
you have to be prepared and you have to be ready for what happens in case things don't go the way that you plan. The investigation got going two and a half weeks ago. A Seattle woman says she was kidnapped and then driven to a home in Klamath Falls, Oregon, 450 miles away. That's about a seven hour drive. The FBI says the woman was chained up in this cinder block cell and sexually assaulted. Investigators say the homemade cell was located in the garage and shared a few pictures of it. That's what you see right here. They say there was only one light bulb in there. She managed to escape and get help. The suspect, 29-year-old uh, Nagasi Zuberi, was later arrested in Reno, Nevada. He has lived in 10 different states, and the FBI tells me within the past hour, he lived at numerous locations in the Oakland area from 2012 to 2018. This morning, the FBI gave gripping details about how the Seattle woman heroically freed herself. The woman fought for her life, beating the doors in the walls of this cell with bloodied hands. Through her perseverance, she broke free and waved down a passing motorist asking for their help to call 911. The victim's focus, actions, and her will to survive triggered a law enforcement response that may have actually saved many other women from a similar nightmare. Zuberi has multiple aliases, including Justin Hai Chi, which the FBI says he went by for most of his life or has gone by for most of his life. Investigators believe there are potentially more victims out there and they're asking them for to come forward. A federal grand jury indicted him today for the alleged kidnapping of that Seattle woman. ABC News has learned that Zuberi is accused of drugging victims' drinks and impersonating police officers. Investigators believe both of those actions happened. To plan out something as dastardly as this, drive hundreds of miles to kidnap someone and build a structure where I am going to sexually assault and molest and take advantage of you until I'm done with you and then God knows what's going to happen thereafter. We know how these situations typically turn out. He's not just going to release her and let her go freely. And in any event, her life's never going to be the same. We deal with these sexual abuse issues all the time. Uh, we have, they're not victims. They like to be characterized as survivors. And this is exactly why this young lady was not about to be just another victim. She was not about to just give up. She fought and fought and fought to get out of there. This is why, you know, now I think about it, this is exactly why one of my clients years ago taught me the difference between being a victim and being a survivor. She fought her way out bloody. She got out of that building. She, she, she survived. She did what she needed to do to get out. And because of her action, she not only saved her life, but the lives of many others. These type of perpetrators need to be, they need to be punished in such a way that other people understand if you commit these type of heinous, awful crimes, that terrible things will befall you. I hate sexual abuse crimes. I hate them with a passion because in dealing with my clients the way that I have, I know how this affects their lives. I know how it changes everything. And it's not just something to get over. It's not, it's something that affects you for years and years and years to come. Some, some people never get over these things. I've had situations where clients sign with me, they look like they're fine and they're okay, and they, they can't handle it. And some of them even take their own lives because of the way in which they've been treated in the past. I hate to say it, but in cases like this, and this is going to be very controversial, but I would not be opposed to when you have someone who repeatedly offends and victimizes other people, I would not be opposed to introducing or reintroducing castration as a penalty. If you can't control yourself, if you're victimizing others, if you change other people's lives, you should pay the ultimate price. And I'm sorry, to me, losing my stuff would be that ultimate penalty.
I don't really love New York, but I love these particular New Yorkers. They saw that a criminal was trying to get away after getting involved in several incidents, injuring people, getting involved in altercations, and they stopped him. They used reasonable force to assist the police officers in apprehending a criminal. Because of the actions of these brave New Yorkers, this criminal, alleged criminal, we're all considered innocent until we're found guilty, as this guy will be. We'll be forced to answer for his crimes and hopefully be put away for a, a, enough time to where he will make sure not to do anything as stupid as this ever again. I hope that you found some of those videos as thought-provoking as we did. They were very interesting. I learned some things. My, my heartstrings got tugged on some and some of them really made me think. We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. At the front right now, we have two really big deadlines that are coming up and they're coming up in a very short period of time. We have, as many of you guys know, we do a lot of sexual abuse cases and our, uh, we represent almost 3,000 Boy Scout cases that have been resolved over the last few years. There's a very important deadline that's approaching at the end of October to make sure that the claims of our aggrieved clients get properly processed. Another important case that we're working on is our case against the USDA involving discrimination against the nation's farmers. That's an extremely important case to us. And I mentioned that to you because we also have a deadline date on that of October the 31st to process completely their claims or their cases get washed away and they don't get paid. So again, there's a lot of pressure on lawyers, especially with deadlines, to make sure that things are done properly, because if you don't, it can cost your client a whole lot of money. Now, back to our program. I want to know what you think, though. I want to know what you want to see. What else can we provide for you? What legal analysis do you need to hear from us? The more information you give to us, the better a show we can put on for you next time. So please share, provide your comments, like, comment, subscribe. This is attorney Darren Miller, and I'd like to thank you for watching our show. See you next time.